Window Components in Word 2010. When you first open up Word 2010, there are quite a few differences or changes if you compare 2010 to, let's say, 2003. At the top portion of the window, you'll see it looks like toolbars, but really it's a ribbon space that offers up tabs that you can click to and see various groupings such as on the Home tab, the Font Group, Paragraph Group, etc. When I go to the Page Layout tab, Page Setup is there for you as a group, Paragraph, etc. Back to the Home tab. In the Font Group, for example, we've got two rows of commands, starting with the font and ending, in this case, on the bottom right, our font color. If you'd rather work with the dialog box, you can look for an arrow on the right edge of the group name. Font, and when I hover over the arrow on the right side, I'll see Show the Font dialog box in the tooltip. When I click, the Font dialog box appears. I'll just cancel here for now. Not always when you click on the arrow will you get a dialog box. When you go to the clipboard group, for example, and point to the arrow, this time, when I click, I'm going to land up showing the clipboard task pane. And here we have it appearing on the left portion of our screen. I'll close it. If I'd rather use the keyboard to navigate from one tab to the next, I can hit the Alt keyboard key and you'll note letters on top of every one of the tabs. When I press, let's say, P for page layout, it will bring that tab forward. Note the group names will have their commands with a letter or a combination of letters. If I want to get into orientation, for example, I hit O and it pulls down the drop down for me. When I'm done, I don't want to be in that one command or I want to cancel. You can always use the escape key, top left hand portion of your keyboard. ESC will cancel that one drop down. I press it escape it will cancel me out of that command and I press escape yet again and it will cancel me out of the tab and its choices. So you might need to press escape a few times to cancel right back out so your cursor is flashing again. What's different between 2010 and 20, uh, 2007 is that we have a file tab. We used to have a Windows logo in 2007. We did have a ribbon then. But here we've got a file tab when I click, it takes me into the backstage view. Notice I don't see any of my, um, my page or my in information in my file when I'm in the File tab. Unlike if I'm at the Home tab or Page Layout, I still can see my information on my piece of paper. But when I'm at File, I don't see it. That's why they call it Backstage View, I think. File will offer up four main filing options here at the top, our, our favorites. Save down to close. Info is a whole new category, gives us information about the file. If I wanted to protect the file and check for issues before I share. New offers up a ton of really cool, I feel, templates. So explore some of these. You don't have to create your own uh, file from scratch. When you go to Save and Send, you've got some save choices here, just like if we were in the Save As dialog box, but also have an opportunity to send at the same time. So you can, for example, create a PDF and send it at the same time. Under File, we've got Options. I'm going to briefly take us here so you can see Word options and lots of cool categories to poke around and experiment with. When we go to, let's say, Customize Ribbon, what's new in 2010 is you can actually add tabs to your ribbon. So over on the right side where it says Customize the Ribbon, we've got our default tabs that come with Word. We can add new tabs by clicking on New Tab, and when I do that, it offers up a group that's new as well. I can rename my tab. I highlight it, choose Rename, and My Favorites. And I can rename my group if I like as well, but I'll just leave it empty for, for this, this, this uh, demonstration right now. On the left side, what commands do I want to use as part of my um, tab or in my group? 
Oh, let's see. Email, I'll add. And I'm just doing some random ones here, even though I know some of these are actually on the ribbon already. Why don't we change it so that it's not popular commands? We go with commands not in the ribbon. So these are all the commands that currently aren't on the ribbon. So I don't know. I'm just picking some here, just so you can see. Okay, so I've got some uh, commands. If I want to remove any of these, I just highlight and choose remove. I can rename my group, and I'll do that in just a mo moment. But let's first click OK and see what we have so far. My favorites goes to the right of page layout because that was the active tab. Yeah, I can move this tab around after, so if I want it in here or down at the back, not a problem. When I click on my favorites, here's my group that's not named yet, and I've got my commands here. What did I do? Where did I go to work with the new tab? I clicked on File, and I go to Options, Customize Ribbon, and here, if I want my favorites to be moved up, I keep it highlighted, move up or down, whatever the case may be. I can give it a, a, a group name, and I'll just say this is a group name, ha ha ha. And I can assign a symbol, which actually won't be displayed as part of the display name, but it's, it's in the background anyway. When I click OK and I choose OK, now I've got my group name. The Quick Access Toolbar is located by default above the ribbon, and I've already moved this Quick Access Toolbar below the ribbon. So how do you move it above? How do you move it below? Yeah, we've got one toolbar. We had lots of toolbars in 2003 and, and previous versions, and then they moved beyond uh, ribbon, uh, sorry, toolbars in 2007 to the ribbon, but we still have this toolbar available for us even in 2010. Quick Access Toolbar. You want to quickly access your favorite commands. You can go to the Home tab, and let's say I really like text effects. When I right-click on it, Add Text Effects gets added to the back edge of my Quick Access Toolbar. So when I'm even at References, I have this command available for me. Review, let's say I like Track Changes, I'll add it, and so on. So right-click, choose Add, and that command gets added. I can even add the entire group if I want. On the bottom edge of the group name, I right click on proofing here, add to quick access toolbar. And when I click on this one, you'll see that the entire group is visible. Suppose I want to get rid of some of these commands. I can go to customize quick access toolbar, more commands, and I'm back at word options, this time quick access toolbar, and I can highlight any one of these and remove, or I can reposition just like I did for my um, ribbon but you can also right click on any of these commands and remove from the quick access toolbar. What about moving it above the ribbon like I was talking about initially? If I click on customize, show above, you can see it's above but I like it below so that it's right above my workspace. Lastly, when I go back to customize, some of your favorites might be here, so you don't have to drill down into more commands to, to locate them or work with it on the work from the ribbon to do so. So I check off new and open, and I happen to like the order um, where it reads new and then it reads open and then save. Reminds me of the olden days. And boom, I've got new, open, and save right on my quick access toolbar. Remember, when I hit Alt, I can get the um, tabs with their letters on top to navigate to those tabs. And now on that quick access toolbar, I'll have you focus in with me that I've got some numbers associated with those commands. Pressing escape however many times to get yourself back so that your cursor is flashing. That keyboard shortcut, memorize, use it, it is for cancel. The status bar is located at the bottom of your document. It's right above the task bar in your Windows operating uh, program. So at the very, very bottom is your task bar, and right above that you're going to see your status bar. My status bar has page one of two, words, um, the dictionary English, and then I have my views on the right and my zoom slider. The status bar can be customized 
all you have to do is position your mouse on the bar, the status bar, and, pre and press the right button of your mouse. And when you do this, you're going to see a list of commands that you can add to your status bar. And all you have to do is click to add or click to remove. Anything that has a check mark will, will display on the status bar when you're using those features. And if you don't want it on your status bar, you click to remove. For example, I have the overtype. I'm going to click and add that. As soon as I click anywhere in my document, at the very bottom on my status bar, I read insert. So if I were to click at the very beginning of my paragraph and type in the word the and hit my space bar, what will happen here, it will insert to the left. But if I were to click at the very beginning of my paragraph and click on insert, it changes and switches my keyboard to overtype. So now when I type, I'll type in T H A and see how the A will overwrite the E, but it doesn't insert. Now to go, if I press the letter T again, see now I have no space. And if I want to add a space, I go back down to the overtype. And now I'm back into the insert mode. I just have to hit my space bar. If I want to change the letter T to lowercase, I will hit the insert on my status bar and press the letter T and it will over strike, over type that character. So the, ta uh, the um, status bar at the very bottom can be customized. All you have to do is the right button of your mouse and add and remove the check marks.